Hello everyone, I'm Susan Lee McDonald and welcome back to my show, The Interview. Every industry usually has some type of visionary or forward thinker to help move things into the future. And my guest today might be just that kind of visionary for architecture. I'm going to meet with Chun Peck, who is an avant-garde designer and architect who has done some amazing things like the spaceport in New Mexico and a lot of other things here in Korea as well. So let's go into the interview. Hi. Hi, June. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I'm so excited that uh, we're going to have a ch chance to talk to you about all kinds of fun things regarding architecture. Um, you're super avant-garde, yes? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yes. We'll talk about that. So we have everything set up here for our interview. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the lights and cameras. So please have a seat. Thank you. All right. And we'll get all comfy and get ready for our little chat. Yep. <laughs> Quite a beautiful place. Isn't yep. this gorgeous? Mm -hmm. I, I love being outside, and even though it's a little chilly, you know, yeah, I still except, have to except wear being my a little chilly. <laughs> <laughs> so, June Peck, you are a Harvard educated uh, avant garde architect. You've done some incredible projects, including the New Mexico Spaceport, and uh, you're known as somewhat of a forward thinker in the community of up-and-coming architects. Um, that's what we know about you, but who is Jun Peck? Uh, yes, I, you probably said everything <laughs> that I can, I can say, describe myself. Um, I'm, I'm an architect, UK registered architect. I was uh, educated in the States and I worked in Europe, uh, France and London and, and, and part of the time in New York as well. And now I'm back in, uh, in Korea about a year, year and a half ago. And uh, my ma major kind of uh, uh, projects, is, as, as you said, was uh, Spaceports, uh, which I was a project architect for over five years. Mm -hmm. And I think they can uh, kind of summarize who I am mm -hmm. for now. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, knowing that uh, you've worked on a number of very interesting projects and the spaceport definitely being something that uh, is grabbing a lot of people's attention because let's face it you know there's never been a spaceport as far as we know ever in the history of humankind yes. and so to be able to work on a project like that uh, that's a civilian project is uh, something quite remarkable um, and uh, I'm curious uh, what do you think about having worked on a project like the spaceport? Uh, it was actually quite, I would say I was quite lucky to given the opportunity to um, take a role as a project architect. And I guess part of our uh, architect's career, you are, you know, you don't have much choice what you want to work on unless mm -hmm. you're very wealthy so that you can commission yourself. Uh, or when you're working for some company, you have to be at the right time and right moments uh, to kind of uh, be responsible for that kind of projects. And uh, I, I think it was, uh, uh, what was meaningful on that project was what the project actually represents. Mm. As you say, it's first ever um, a private uh, or civilian spaceport ever. And, and that is quite meaningful itself. And then what the projects or the whole program, the Virgin program actually represents, mm -hmm. you know, actually going to the space of uh, 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 public. You know, they can buy a ticket, they can go to, the space and then architecture is just a part of it mm. and our design actually uh, complements and actually helps uh, pe people who fly to the space and, and we are creating a, a hangar and a lounge mm -hmm. for them. So I think what the project, uh, uh, the meaning of the project is uh, more important than the actual building itself. 
So June, you've gained worldwide fame for being uh, the project designer for the spaceport. And a lot of people are paying a lot of attention to you, partially because there has never been a spaceport built before. And I'm curious that even though you weren't the one who commissioned the spaceport, I'm wondering if you can explain the kind of concept and mission behind uh, the desire to mm -hmm. build a spaceport. Uh, yes, uh, if I can describe a little bit what the spaceport represents mm -hmm. is that it's actually um, uh, created by a spaceport authority, which mm -hmm. is uh, part of the uh, agency of the new uh, state of New Mexico. And um, they want to bring uh, this kind of a space tourism in t into the States. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, there was, uh, uh, in UK, there was a Virgin Galactic, who was uh, uh, part of the Virgin Group. Mm -hmm. And they had uh, this vision that uh, now it's about time they will uh, go to, the public can, can go to the space. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone can buy a ticket mm -hmm. and almost buying an airplane ticket, and you can go to the space. That's such an so amazing <laughs> idea. I mean, personally, I don't know if you are a fan of Star Trek or sci-fi movies mm -hmm. but for someone like myself I mean I'm a huge sci-fi fan and I know a lot of people are do you think this this uh, will appeal to those of us who are uh, want to be uh, space travelers I, I think definitely we, we uh, appeal to those uh, those kind of people and uh, um, and you know in the, in the past you know there is a space uh, a travel but it's all government by NASA mm -hmm. or um, uh, Soviet uh, programs or European programs, but this is the first time ever for the public mm -hmm. and a pri as a private uh, a spaceport where you can uh, go to the space. So it will be uh, extremely exciting for mm -hmm. for many of those who um, who likes this kind of space story or or almost uh, alien stories. Uh, so it kind of it really fits into that sort of. Uh, uh, um, uh, the environment in this, uh, the, the desert in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I heard that the construction took a really long time to complete. Now, when was the project envisioned? When was it uh, then kind of designed by you and your team? And then when was it actually kind of implemented? Mm. The competition uh, or the request to uh, bids came, re request for bids actually came in 2007. Mm. And we entered, we had to form a consortium along with the uh, New Mexican local architects and engineers. Mm. And who's we? Uh, um, it's Foster and Partners, okay. um, which was, uh, I was, I was there for 12 years and I was a project architect uh, for this job. And then uh, since we are uh, overseas architects, we had to find the local um, counterparts, mm -hmm. which is the local architects and uh, engineers, um, and then we had to find the project managers. Mm -hmm. So you had to form a team before we enter into the competition. Oh, yeah. And there was a bidding process uh, by uh, pre-qualification, and that took, um, th there was about 20 of them, 20 uh, very well-known companies. And we got uh, through the paperwork or, or through the qualification process, so we, they were they narrowed down to four uh, mm. architects. Mm -hmm. And uh, among those four architects, we had, uh, they had a competition, design mm. competition. Okay. So we prepared about two to three weeks and we submitted uh, the design. And uh, we won the competition in mm. 2007. And we had uh, a concept design, schematic design, detail design through uh, construction over five years. In, uh, and in 2012, it was completed. Mm. But it was not an easy process. Uh, you know, normally the building of such uh, kind of a scale would take about maximum of three years yes. if everything goes uh, smoothly. Mm -hmm. And uh, but this project actually took about five years. Mm. Not that everything went didn't go smoothly, but because there was a time that we had to hold for a little while and then mm. restart, hold for a little while, restart. Mm. And, and there were a bit of client changes at mm -hmm. some point and, and that we need to cope with. So uh, it took uh, a bit of delays and um, postponing to be, uh, to be completed in the, you know, over five years. The design actually started um, when we got the uh, client's brief or the mm -hmm. owner's requirements. The main thing is that, is, that, um, is that the building has to be invisible from the ground, but it mm. has to be quite iconic in the air okay. so that's really a, a contradictory statement you know how can mm. you make a building uh, mm. invisible at, at the same time be iconic and um, 
uh, everyone kind of struggles because it's, uh, you know, uh, it's quite contradictory. It sounds yeah. almost impossible. So did you have to build it underground? Or there, there was the part of the thinking as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was kind of easy way. To, but then, you know, how are you going to get the uh, aircraft or spacecraft out of the underground unless mm -hmm. you have a, a hydraulic mm -hmm. lift or something? But then hydraulic lift is going to cost you lots of money, mm -hmm. uh, more than the project budget. So well, we are looking around the sites and then we saw uh, this kind of a, a small mound uh, in the desert. Mm -hmm. And that's what people call a point of rocks. Yes. And these are the uh, reference points when their um, uh, you know, previous kind of conquistors and, and uh, people c traveling from uh, Mexico to North America, they're looking at these point of rocks. They are okay. little mound or hills okay. to actually find you know, reference mm -hmm. uh, or uh, locate himself where, where he's about mm. in, 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 that, in, in that desert. So we, we got the cue from that, uh, that mound or the hills. Oh. So we decided to create um, uh, from the west when you approach mm. to the building, that the building is actually almost like a very gentle mound mm. uh, blending into this uh, mm -hmm. part of the uh, landscape and desert. But from the air, then um, it's quite iconic with its uh, runways and mm -hmm. then, uh, the aprons in front of, in front of the building. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's, I think, how, how we went about resolving the, um, the kind of ironic or uh, contradictory uh, mm -hmm. state of the brief mm -hmm. from the clients. And so from then on, the design took, uh, it was quite clear how mm -hmm. we're going to approach uh, mm -hmm. the design. So all the finishes or, or the uh, kind of sequences getting into the <coughs> building start off from there. So, mm -hmm. so when you're actually driving, approaching to the building, you probably see nothing. Mm. You, you see a desert, you see a little mound, and then you see the mountains, mm -hmm. uh, Sierra, Gra Sierra Grande mountains uh, far away. And you enter uh, the entrance and then you go through this kind of tunnel space, mm -hmm. which we call Earth space. Mm -hmm. And then you go through the bridge and then you arrive at the lounge. Uh -huh. And when you arrive at the lounge, it's kind of wow. And then you see this uh, mm -hmm. uh, long runway in front of you and, and the beautiful mountain mm -hmm. and, and deserts uh, in front of you. So, um, so it's kind of a sequence uh, wise uh, designed and then it's all about um, based on the virgin's experience, mm -hmm. you know, or customer experience, uh, how the, the customers who's using the spaceport, mm. how they're going to use the building. Interesting. Th so when is the first uh, space flight scheduled to happen? Mm. Um, I think it was uh, about, it was starting to happen in 2012 or 2011, but you okay. know, the, the test flight probably got, uh, they had to have a longer test flight regime because just to secure the uh, safety uh, of, of the customers. And, uh, and people, and the, because safety is kind of really important issue for, uh, uh, for Virgin. the anticipated uh, initial cost of going to space for a regular person? I, I think I read, um, it, I think it has changed uh, over a couple of years and it was 250,000 mm -hmm. US dollars. Mm. And I think that's the cost so for the training and then going for uh, two and a half hours in, in, in the, for the space trip. So some people would have to sell their homes, basically, to fly <laughs> into space. Yeah, I, I, I met some uh, customers when there were some events um, mm. held on spaceports. And some of them are remortgaged their house to buy the tickets. Mm. Um, wow. Yeah, or, or you know, there are kind of different means of um, buying the tickets or, or dif from all different kind of backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And usually they, a lot of them are kind of uh, entrepreneurs and as, um, probably likes extreme sports and yeah. you know, uh, uh, likes uh, probably uh, taking risks mm -hmm. in their life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Given that it's so expensive to th even think about flying into space uh, with this maybe first or uh, several batches of the first uh, ventures into space that are civilian, um, it doesn't look like it's something that uh, any average person might be able to do. Mm -hmm. But who do you think are going to be people who would be going up into space kind of first? Um, yes, I think the first flights I read a, a newspaper a couple of days ago mm -hmm. was 
to later this year, uh, 2014, mm. and it was going to be uh, Mr. Richard Branson and, and, and his family mm -hmm. will be on the first flights. Mm. Now, have you had a chance to meet Sir Richard Branson? And uh, did he give you any commentary on mm. what he thought about your design? No, I met about three or four times occasionally. Mm -hmm. I didn't have much time to uh, chat deeply with mm -hmm. Richard Branson um, because he was quite busy uh, during those uh, press conferences. Uh, all he said uh, was that he did uh, he liked the building. He did a great job. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> Well, that's a good I compliment, I right? Yeah, I think that was a fantastic compliment. Fr from what I hear, he's pretty vocal when he doesn't like something. So oh, yeah, the yeah, fact okay. that uh, he, you know, gave you a pat on the back and said good job, yes, was probably pretty meaningful. Yeah, that was quite, uh, yeah, that was quite rewarding. You mm -hmm. know, the fact that uh, he, he liked it, almost uh, being a. Uh, that you are being a pioneer, yes. uh, almost a feeling of being a pioneer. Mm -hmm. Because when you when you look at how many people went to the space mm -hmm. uh, through the uh, uh, U.S. governmental projects or, or Soviet projects, are I think it's about 50 or or, or so astronauts mm -hmm. who's been to the space. So whoever flies from with Virgin will be I don't know 55th or you know mm -hmm. 60th. Uh, so there will be and then there will be the first. Um, uh, private space flight, so mm -hmm. here will be the first uh, uh, commercial uh, f uh, space flight uh, uh, traveler. Yeah. Hi, 안녕하세요. What do you work with? Ah, I'm working on some projects from a few years ago. I'm working on some 렌즈 피아노 사무실, 장르별 사무실에서 했던 프로젝트랑 제가 학교 때 했던 프로젝트를 지금 보고 있는 중이에요. 여기 보시면은 이 스케치랑 보시면 이거는 피켄 피켄 클로펜버그라고 남성 의류 백화점이에요. 그 백화점을 기존에 있던 빌딩을 어, 그 옆에다가 이제 그 유리 어, 랩을 씌우면서 그런 그 백화점에 약간 좀 좋은 공간을 이렇게 어, 마, 만들어내는 그런 프로젝트가 있었거든요. 그래서 지금 여기 보시면은 거기에 대한 어, 스케치도 있었고. 이 3차원적인 걸 만들어내기가 굉장히 힘, 힘들었었는데 그때 당시에 이제 그 컴퓨터 그래픽으로 그랬, 그랬던 시절을 지금 보면서 연상하고 있는 거고요. 여기 이 이미지를 보시면 은 여기는 어, 예전에 삼성 어, 제가 포스트에 있을 때 삼성 프로젝트가 하나 있었어요. 삼성 CNT가 이제 발주처였고 여기 보시면 이제 파사드를 위한 스터디인데 파사드를 어떻게 스터디를 했냐면 은이 일조량에 따라서 이런 셀들이 이런 육각형의 셀들이 조금 조금씩 그 닫히는 차양하는 각도가 다 틀려지는 어, 그런 구도였었어요. 그래가지고 어떻게 보면 약간 좀 벌집 같은 어, 모양인데 어, 일조량을 조절하는 그런 어, 리스폰시브 파사드 시스템이라고 하는 거였습니다. 지금 이거는 뭐 많은 이미지는 없는데 장르벨에 있을 때 제가 음, 그때 호텔 프로젝트가 있었어요. 그래서 리버 호텔이라고 했었는데 여기 보이, 보이는 브루클린 브리지랑 맨해튼 브리지 사이에 이렇게 긴 어, 그 장방향으로 수평적으로 긴 호텔 어, 호텔 사계층의 호텔을 어, 이 강의에 거의 떠 있는 듯한 그런 어, 프로, 어, 그런 빌딩을 어, 디자인한 어, 시절이었고요. 그리고 지금 이거 보시는 이두 이미지는 어, 예전에 지금 아시는 스페이스포트가 나오기 전에 저희가 여러 안이 있었어요. 그 중에 어, 이게 이제 첫째 아니었었죠. 그래서 이거는 더 약간 좀 어, 샤이니하고 네, 반짝반짝거리고 사막에서 굉장히 어, 그런 조형적인 그런 어, 형태의 그런 건축물로 하고 이제 요 가운데 있는 공간에서 위를 바라보는 뷰는 약간 좀 유리로 돼가지고 밖에 있는 어, 이미지들이나 별들이나 그런 야경을 안쪽이 안쪽에 있는 코트로 이렇게 빨아들이는 그런 느낌의 이제 어, 그런 이미지였죠. June Peck communicates with the world by designing unique spaces with his creativity and artistic touch. Crossing over the boundary between imagination and reality is the best experience he has had as an architect. Ah, yeah. This is what I'm doing now. This is a project that I'm working on. 그 서울에 이제 한 곳에 있는 호텔 작 호텔 프로젝트예요. 어, 이 프로젝트는 어, 이, 이 면이 굉장히 이렇게 어, 협소하기 때문에 한 18m밖에 안 돼요. 근데 빌딩을 이제 옆에 있는 기존에 있는 빌딩처럼 어, 전체를 다 이제 큰 면으로 가져가는 게 아니라 어, 약간 무슨 어, 파이프로 올간이나 아니면 이제 그 손가락처럼 
어, 빌딩을 좀 길쭉길쭉하게 한 6m 정도 모듈로 해서 중간중간에 이제 끊어지면서 어, 가는 거예요. 주변에 있는 박스 빌딩과는 좀 달라 보이는 어, 그런 컨셉으로 가는 거죠. The key to producing the best results in a project is teamwork. Cooperation among team members is essential, but what's equally as important is that they are led by someone who's driven with outstanding leadership skills. ถ้าเกิดว่าเราไม่มีความรู้สึกเกี่ยวกับเรื่องนี้เราอาจจะไม่สามารถทำได้ถ้าเกิดว่าเราไม่มีความรู้สึกเกี่ยวกับเรื่
uh, dismantled and they can be reassembled somewhere mm. else. So, so, so the mo it's, it's kind of a connection between the, the mobility of the car along with the uh, kind of a, a mobile nature of the interior architecture. Okay. So what were the clients thinking of when they first came to you with this project? Um, I think they, they were thinking that the space or the lounge space I'm designing has to relate to the, the BMW 7 Series mm -hmm. in, in particular and in its philosophy or in its uh, essence or in its ideas. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't really need to um, uh, mimic or, mm -hmm. or follow the form of the car or you know, uh, relate directly to the car. So it has to have the meaning or, or the kind of extraction of its uh, essence of the car. But um, it, it, it is a space, it's almost like a backdrop, you know, mm -hmm. in a theater backdrop. And then you, your main star is the, uh, the 7 Series car. And I think they were looking for uh, a space or the lounge that enhances you know, how you perceive mm -hmm. that 7 Series, mm -hmm. uh, along with the architecture, interior architecture, which is part of it, as well as, well as the other cultural events. You have the wine seminars, uh, you have um, other kind of uh, musical uh, pian uh, pianists coming there to, to, to play. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a series of different sort of seminars that you can attend. Interesting. So. You know, uh, one of the things that really strikes me is its shape, mm. that it's a pentagon mm. shape. Now, that's not a typical shape that you think of when you think of a, a, a building necessarily, but what gave you that idea? Uh, the, the pentagon, I, the, the first, there's a two, two parts of uh, BMW 7 Series lounge. Mm -hmm. the, in 2012, there was um, a pentagon shaped a module. Mm -hmm. But then uh, in 2013, there's another uh, version which is more kind of um, uh, more like a, a canyon-like space, okay. so more organic. So the first, going back to the first mm -hmm. one, which has a pent pentagonal cell mm -hmm. uh, shape, was it represents um, uh, the pentagon shape is actually kind of a, a shape of the Gordon ratio, mm -hmm. and the Gordon ratio represents one of the most kind of a structurally uh, efficient uh, uh, shape for yes. it. And then, or the pentagon or the hexagons, you know, they or, always form and, and, and links as a structure, um, uh, kind of a geometry. Mm -hmm. And it represents the efficiency of the car uh, and the fact that the lights are coming out of it. Uh, mm -hmm. That relates to the to lights in, in from, from the LED lighting from the car. Okay. And, and um, it, it is more kind of a symbolic gesture. But then the, the pentagon is a, is a cell and is a module. It can be repeated all the time. Mm -hmm. Just like the, uh, the car is manufactured as a module in the factory, okay. you have the, all the same parts and, and, and they are assembled in the factory uh, and they are kind of all lie on the conveyor belt. And, and same as this, uh, the lounge, uh, the wall structure, which is all mm -hmm. made in shops in, 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 in the factory, and they get assembled mm -hmm. uh, as a module and with r through the repetition. Okay. So what do you think makes this space interesting? Uh, it, the space was interesting because it's quite a small space, about mm -hmm. 300 square meter. And, and uh, the fact that it had low ceiling, you're, uh, and then you had to design the wall and the ceiling, mm -hmm. And what you had to maximize is that because it was quite small, you wanted to make the space quite um, uh, not grand, but you know something uh, impressive in another way because mm -hmm. it's, it has a low ceiling and quite a small space. Mm -hmm. So through the repetition um, and and through the uh, the change of lighting in the space, okay. it changes the mood and feel. Mm -hmm. So uh, depends on the kind of events they're holding in that lounge space. Your uh, the the LED lighting changes mm -hmm. and the whole. The color of the world changes. Mm -hmm. In designing this uh, BMW Mo Mobility Lounge, what was your one of your most favorite parts of designing this? The favorite part was that, just like the spaceport, it had uh, spaceport was for a spacecraft and mm -hmm. people who's traveling. Mm -hmm. So it has that sort of a kind of a, a transportation like feel of uh, some sort of movement to the mm -hmm. space or the f to the building. Uh, it's for a building for something constantly moving. Mm -hmm. and, and then same, same goes for the lounge. I mean, you're excited, you have a, a car which is about to almost feel like it's about to move mm -hmm. and, 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 and at a speed. And then you're designing a space that captures that sort of movement. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of dynamic. Uh, it has a sort of dynamic feel to it. Mm -hmm. Building the spaceport, building uh, the mobility lounge for BMW, uh, you seem to have a thing, a theme going for 
fast moving vehicles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is that something that you purposely try to choose uh, or did it just happen by luck? I think it just happened and then I was thinking, you know, uh, when some, peop some people are asking me what are you doing which are quite uh, uh, consistent or which is really you, which mm -hmm. is the same as before, but then I was, then to that question I was thinking about, okay, what's the kind of similarity with the with the lounge, BMW lounge in the spaceport, but mm -hmm. then I thought that, that it has a, it's a building for a, a spacecraft or something a mobile mm -hmm. building for a car. So uh, I kind of kind of linked that. Uh, mm -hmm. I made both the geared towards passengers, both geared towards people who probably love mm -hmm. a little bit of uh, risk and, uh, and the speed. speed. Yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Jun, you've done these great projects, and I just have to ask, you know, what brought you in this direction to do architecture? What what interested you about it? I guess I wasn't um, really when I really got into architecture. It was my uh, second or third year in, in in college or university, and uh, up to that point, even when I had to choose uh, my major, uh, I wasn't hundred percent sure exactly what uh, I was going to do, but mm -hmm. I think when I went to, um, um, yeah, when I was at the university, a second or third year, I really got into it, so. Mm. Mm. But and overall, I kind of liked the buildings and houses when I was kids, mm -hmm. and I remember um, doing some sketches and, you know, coming up with idea, uh, mm -hmm. idea living or, or home in that, uh, uh, when in, as, as, as a child. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, so I think that's gradually that you know I, it was probably my destiny to be mm. um, to become uh, going to this field mm -hmm. because I was living in Seoul in, in inside of Seoul uh, and it was at the time that all the apartment blocks are going on and I was living in an apartment block building it was quite comfortable but uh, in an apartment uh, block of twelve stories and I was in that. Uh, maybe I was kind of looking for more uh, a rural <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, life of living. Mm -hmm. So it was um, outside. You have the car garages and and uh, uh, and then quite a spacious uh, uh, living rooms and and bathrooms with good views to the nature. Mm -hmm. And I think that sort of thing. So um, I don't know. Maybe psychologically or deep inside of me, I thought uh, living in a, a concrete block is not such an ideal living. Mm -hmm. From what I understand, you have what you call kind of a jewel of a book, like a mm -hmm. really important book that uh, you've kind of compiled some of your old uh, and, and recent uh, yeah. works. Um, and uh, I believe that we have that here today. Mm -hmm. Do we have some things from RISD in there too? Uh, yes, I have. I'd love to see some of the things right. that uh, you designed. At the time when I was at RISD, there was um, we were still uh, doing you know doing the drawings or the plans in mm -hmm. hand. Uh -huh. So one of the projects are is the Centro di Michelangelo, which is uh, Michelangelo uh -huh. Center. Yes. And it such places in um, uh, Florence, mm -hmm. right next to San Lorenzo. Okay. And San Lorenzo is famous uh, basilica or church. Uh, designed by mm. uh, Brunelleschi, uh, mm -hmm. and Michelangelo actually did uh, part in the building with the interior job, which is a Laurentian library, mm -hmm. and with uh, his kind of famous stairs. And this old architecture students knows about should know about this uh, uh, this this library. Yes. And he was also commissioned to do an incomplete facade, mm. and then and then we were to create um, Michelangelo Center or the archive mm -hmm. where uh, the scar uh, scholars and, and students and even public can come and enjoy. 
So it was kind of a mixture of very uh, old uh, or a kind of a 15th century building uh, with combination with this academic uh, mm -hmm. uh, program and so on. So in that sense, it was quite an uh, in uh, interesting project. And every, all the drawings are done oh. by, hand by hand at the time. And so this is something that, may I see this? This is something yeah. that you did uh, while you were still in, in college. Yes. So that's one thing from RISD now. Um, since RISD, then mm -hmm. later on you went on to uh, I went to Harvard. Uh, yeah, I went to Harvard for graduate school. Mm -hmm. And there was projects um, which I thought was, was interesting. It was uh, our tutor, my tutor, my mentor at the time was mm -hmm. late Enlik uh, Mirayas. He was a um, mm. um, Catalan architect from Barcelona. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he was definitely a genius as an mm. architect. He passed away uh, about two years later uh, when, you know, after uh, mentoring mm -hmm. at Harvard. So the, the, at Harvard, there is a science center yes. in, in the main campus. And uh, it, was, it was designed by um, Jose Luis Cert, he, who, was ex who was also a Catalan architect. Mm -hmm. And uh, he used to work with uh, Luc Rizier at some point. Mm -hmm. And, and he was commissioned to the Science, Science Center in 1973. And because of, you know, now we're living in 19, uh, 2000, it was hypothetical projects, mm -hmm. whether if you were to redo uh, with the same program okay. uh, as a science center, uh, you had a choice of either uh, demolishing it and redesigning it, or you could actually leave part of the science center or kind of remodel remodeling or renovating mm -hmm. it. So there was the no, there was the project in Sepe, which was quite interesting mm -hmm. program. Is uh, so you had to kind of uh, look at the building, look at the program, mm -hmm. look at the use of the building, and um, uh, surrounding kind of campus life mm -hmm. to to come up with a um, your kind of a design or a proposal. Uh, what if you're you uh, if you are to given this kind of commission, what will you do? Okay. So that was uh, a part and of so the project. So what did you decide to do? So I decided to, at the time, it was quite, uh, it, although it's, it's a hypo hypothetical project, so mm -hmm. when I was looking at the whole building, the, the, the circulation mm -hmm. or the, uh, the spine <coughs> of the building was good and they should be respected. Mm. Uh, so if you were to keep the spine of the building, or, um, but then I thought some of the rooms or uh, rooms in the, the lecture halls, mm -hmm. uh, the research labs are slightly kind of outdated because of because they were done in 1970s. Yes. So, so if any, those things need to be uh, mm -hmm. um, remodeled. So you actually leave out uh, it's kind of a, a skeleton or mm -hmm. the uh, the spine of the building as mm -hmm. a circulation. Then you start to replace that kind of soft part of the building, mm -hmm. and but also with the flexibility. Okay. So you could see <coughs> in this image the brown parts are all the ex ex existing buildings around the sites. Mm -hmm. And then you have the new parts which were done in uh, Perspex or kind of a white uh, translucent materials yes. are, are the parts that you can actually insert uh, and then replace. Mm -hmm. So that was the kind of uh, uh, the main concept of the project. But then these uh, uh, circulations at, at certain points, they have, as for the initial uh, sketches, they maximize sort of how you perceived uh, the site or the campus. Mm -hmm. So within the building, mm -hmm. uh, you not only have your kind of uh, a functional academic um, or kind of uh, um, uh, laboratory spaces, mm -hmm. but you also have uh, a kind of resting or social mm -hmm. space mm -hmm. where you relate back to the campus. Mm -hmm. So that was the kind of whole uh, idea for the projects. So since, <coughs> since you have this uh, you know, pretty amazing uh, mentoring from great people as well as these opportunities to study at these uh, great universities. Yeah. Who you would say are your greatest mentors thus mm. far? Uh, I guess my, I, <coughs> definitely I had a good uh, mentors during uh, my undergrad and, and graduate mm -hmm. school mm -hmm. and I had um, uh, amazing and fantastic uh, professors and uh, uh, critics um, uh, above me. And during my professional life, definitely um, m my time uh, at uh, Renzo Piano and, and, and Jean Lebert was, uh, uh, was quite good. And I think uh, I learned the most uh, actually when I was uh, at Foster's and it kind of all came together. Mm. So yeah, I mean, overall, you know, it's all people kind of working uh, at the time, working with me, who was, uh, who was my uh, superiors. And I learned quite a lot from them, uh, as well as uh, you also learn from 
uh, your colleagues mm -hmm. and then you know your uh, people who's working uh, mm -hmm. under you so um, yeah well, I guess a good communication is a good uh, best mentor, I would say. Mm. Yes. Now, we earlier just talked about some mentors and people that has, have given you good advice from time mm. to time. Now, when younger architects or people who are you know, still in school, uh, they know about the work that you've done, they, they want some advice from you. Mm. What are some of the key things that you would advise someone who wants to A, become an architect? Mm. Like, what would they need to do? And what type of advice would you give to aspiring architects? I think you could kind of uh, um, divide in, in two. Uh, you know, you shouldn't really, you should be able to do all, all of them. You should mm -hmm. be kind of all around uh, architects <coughs> <coughs> professionally. But um, you could say there's somebody who's really good at, first of all, you know, we need to have a project mm -hmm. to, uh, to actually show your, uh, perform uh, your design skills and, and show your ideas. And uh, so you need a, a project, but then, you, then the, to have a project, you need a client, you need a patron. And or, or patron was not, you know, previously it's called a sponsor, but, you know, more likely a client. So without the client, you cannot do anything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you need to be in good relationship with the client and then you need to uh, find the work mm -hmm. or get the projects. And that's p really an important part of being an architect. And then, then you, the design skill is probably about 30%, 40% mm -hmm. just to make uh, the building happens. Mm -hmm. um, but then you, you know, there's a, a lot of things to be in, in, in consideration, such as you know the site surroundings, uh, engineering part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a kind of uh, sustainability uh, a part of it. So it's all engineers. It's it's kind of complete uh, art and architecture and engineer, mm -hmm. and it comes with a sort of a social uh, responsibility when you build the building. Uh, f for those uh, who are asp aspiring to be an architect, I like to, they need to be a bit, bit patient if you want to be, because if you're going to do this for, for all your life, then you, know, you don't need to be uh, in rush mm -hmm. to do anything. So mm -hmm. in your projects, uh, even if you get a bad critic, a crit uh, during, uh, uh, or you've been criticized with your work, um, you just have to kind of keep going, you know, mm -hmm. for, you know, just think in a, a long run and, and and with a bit of patience and, and the experiences will come and project will um, kind of come and pan through. So, but if you're in rush, you know, mm -hmm. then things get very difficult and, and stressful. You know, uh, a lot of times when, when you look at a project and uh, you know, your emotions are kind of tied mm -hmm. up in it because it's something that you've created, I imagine that it's hard to step back at times mm -hmm. because you, your opinions are very strong on the subject. How do you take the time to step back for you personally? Uh, yes, I prob probably do some, uh, definitely, even, even if I have a deadline on Monday, if I'm really stuck with something, I would just take uh, a complete break during the weekends mm -hmm. and, then, and, and then do some, something completely different and start uh, fresh uh, from really early Monday morning just to complete that. Mm -hmm. uh, then, but during the break, I would do, you know, uh, Go tra uh, travel somewhere, <laughs> go to uh, go to other countries. Because uh, since I was in London, it was mm -hmm. really easy to get to other countries. Mm -hmm. Or for the weekend, or uh, do a, a sport where it takes really uh, my mind out of uh, mm -hmm. sort of kind of uh, or pre my uh, take my uh, mind out of the preoccupation mm -hmm. or the concerns that I had, uh, the being feeling of stuck or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what really makes me happy is uh, when I get a certain challenge, um, when I have to kind of resolve this challenge or going into this challenge, it's, uh, it's something unknown and uh, I, I kind of like the feeling when I get into that and how I'm going to resolve that, uh, the problem or, or the challenge and that's the time that really makes me happy. The most uh, important or uh, valuable thing in the world to me is um, uh, being uh, quite diligent at what you are uh, assigned to do. Being a diligent, uh, you can always uh, work through your problems. And uh, there, I, I don't believe such thing as a shortcut. Uh, you have to kind of go through um, the, the time, you have to spend enough time and, and thinking to a problem. 
or an issue and to actually resolve it. And I don't think there's any um, uh, kind of quick way of going through those uh, issues. I would choose something in the uh, probably uh, have done MBA or something in the finance side. <laughs> Too late to go back. Time to time, I think about it. If I had I gone. June, I imagine that uh, as an architect, uh, you're constantly thinking of a lot of different uh, ideas simultaneously. You seem to enjoy uh, traveling, and I'm curious if, uh, as, as you're traveling to different places, you're always kind of assessing different architecture of the places that you visit. Uh, and even here in Korea, uh, as you kind of drive around, you see the different kinds of architecture. Does that inspire you? Does it make you want to kind of uh, change certain things when you see uh, something that, uh, that you don't like? Uh, what kind of goes through your mind as you, you see the different architecture of different cities? Mm -hmm. I think my, uh, for example, if I, when I go to Barcelona, mm -hmm. then there is a, a architect, architecture of Gaudi, then there is architecture of uh, modern time. And it's quite uh, e experimental when you look at the whole city. You know, you got all different kind of architecture being tried out. Mm -hmm. um, I think unless it's uh, something uh, very significant um, um, building within a city, uh, like, like a city hall or, or some, uh, Kind of something representative of, of mm -hmm. the city. I think all the the, the experiments are quite interesting, mm -hmm. and then uh, you know there are some parts which I don't agree, but some parts I like when I look at uh, certain buildings. So mm -hmm. you just learn the best parts of mm -hmm. it, and then and then you set your language mm -hmm. based on what you think was good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think too when somebody look at uh, my uh, my designs or you know something that. Um, uh, that I, the project that I've done past, you know, nobody will like everything from, you know, uh, from beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. You know, there will be some parts that doesn't really see fit uh, mm -hmm. for that person or architect. So it just uh, you, you just uh, you know th through all that sort of experience, you you accumulate your, ex your experience and your languages mm -hmm. uh, as an architect. Mm. Okay, so let's say that you had unlimited resources, you had all the money in the world and in the universe to build whatever you wanted, wherever you wanted, and uh, you have full control over that. I know that's, a, that's mm. a huge hypothetical, but if you had that kind of a, a blank check and uh, ability to do anything anywhere, mm -hmm. where would you go, what would you do, and why? Maybe do something uh, I don't know, design of a space station next time, or some uh, habitat in Mars. Mm -hmm. um, yes, something in the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some, something different from um, what you normally get mm -hmm. as a project. Something really out of the box, something that's yes. not typical. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh. last but not least, June, what does architecture mean to you? Mm -hmm. um, no, architecture became almost part of a life, part of my life, and then it's something that I'm going to be uh, doing for a lot longer. Mm. Mm. So, yes, it's uh, something that's what I do, and I don't think I can go back now to do something else. Mm. Are and you happy uh, with what you're doing? Uh, definitely very happy, yes. Mm. I'm, um, yeah, I, I feel. I think I made a <laughs> right, uh, right, uh, right choice, mm -hmm. and I had a, there's a lot of lucky, you know, good moments so far, and I hope it's going to be like that for, uh, you know, until I get a, a lot older. Fantastic. Well, you certainly seem to have uh, an incredibly promising career. Uh, you've done some great things, and uh, I really hope for that uh, upward trajectory for you as mm -hmm. you continue on your career. You're still very young, and. Uh, I'm sure that with your hard work and efforts, you'll get to uh, do some more incredible things, and I can't wait to see what happens in the future. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Thank you very much. You take care. Bye.
had such a fun time talking with the architect uh, Chun Peck. Now, it's such an amazing opportunity to get to learn all about what's going to be happening in the future with regard to architecture, and he was a great source for me today. I hope that you enjoyed the interview, and if you'd like to watch our show again, you can go onto our YouTube channel or check us out on the Adidang TV website. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.